Hello, my name is Charles. Uh, welcome to my shop and welcome to my channel. First, a little bit about me. I'm just sort of your average hobbyist guy. Um, I happen to own a, a couple acres where I grow uh, hay and I grow some uh, pretty big gardens. And uh, as part of that, I own a tractor um, with some implements and I do some fabrication uh, repairs and stuff as necessary for my equipment uh, or to make my life easier. Um, so along with that, I do a little bit of welding, a little bit of machining, but I'm not a professional in either one of those. Uh, so what we have today is I've got my backhoe from the tractor here in the shop. I went to use it the other day um, and actually ended up some welds broke and caused some damage. Uh, I have a little Kubota tractor, B7100, that was built in about 1977, and I believe this backhoe is was bought with it new in 1977. So it's been around, it's seen some hours, um, and now it needs a little bit of repair. So let's go take a look, I'll get you in closer, and we'll take a look at what we need to fix. Okay, so what happened here is um, some welds broke over here where this swing cylinder, which I've already detached and moved out of the way, uh, some welds broke which twisted this piece. So if you look at this side, you'll see that the supports run parallel with the uh, piece that bolts up underneath the tractor. Now, I've already removed the stabilizing cylinder from that side and the stabilizer arm and loosened up the swing cylinder. And then I'll take you around the side and we'll take a look at the welds that broke and how bad it messed things up. Okay, I'm shooting this handheld so hopefully it's uh, not moving around too much. But I believe what happened is these welds down here in the bottom broke first which then caused uh, eventually these welds here to break loose from this plate. Now that wasn't reinforced very well from the original manufacturer, although like I said it's lasted since 1977, um, so it wasn't too bad I think as far as hours of use. But you can see this plate here is badly bent and this plate, I'm not sure if it'll show up on camera, but it has a bit of a curve to it. So both of those will need to be cut out and replaced and you can see that this is the upper uh, pin for the stabilizer arm actually where the uh, the cylinder for it mounts, the lower end of the cylinder mounts so we'll need to make some bushings and weld them in and then down here at the bottom they also have some some thinner bushings and that's actually the pivot for the bottom of the leg so those um, will also need to be uh, added onto the new brackets so we'll probably have to come in here. I don't believe I can get in here with any kind of a cutoff wheel. Uh, most likely I'll have to come in here with my uh, plasma cutter and cut all of this loose, make some new parts, try to get everything properly uh, situated, cleaned up, realigned, and then weld it back in. Uh, you may be noticing this is on wooden pallets, which of course is a bit of an issue with plasma cutting and with welding. Uh, the reason it's on wooden pallets is I don't have sort of a drive-through door, garage door type door on my shop. I just have this double man door that's right behind me which um, you know you can't drive across and I just have standard ceiling heights in here as well. So I managed to get the tractor backed up close enough to uh, unload this hoe back onto the uh, pallets and then using a, a long 4x4, I just pushed all of the pallets uh, far enough back into the shop that I could close the doors. So that's why it's on pallets. So I had to be very careful, maybe wet everything down, um, keep a fire extinguisher handy for the welding. But uh, that's where we're at. So let me get set up, and we'll take a look at cutting this stuff out of here. Okay, so I'm set up with the plasma cutter here, getting ready to go. Uh, what I think I'm going to do is... There's two pieces of channel iron that run across the backhoe that tie the two sides together and serve as part of the main frame. The welds here on the bottom channel iron for this piece are already broken loose. Um, I believe that is the original failure, which then causes the other two welds from these brackets for the cylinder to break loose. So the only thing kind of holding this assembly is welds on the upper channel iron, uh, along the bottom, up this end right here, and then around on the back side. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just go in there, cut the bottom, and cut up. This piece is already sacrificial, but I don't want to damage the channel on it. So it's okay if I uh, 
leave a piece of this on the end of the channel iron, which I think is what I'm going to end up with. Now when I go to cut from the inside, I'm going to take this galvanized tray I have and kind of leave it up against here, which is going to block the view. But I don't uh, want spray coming this way from the plasma cutter. I've got some stuff over here that won't need slag all over. This way is not as bad. Uh, and I've sprayed everything down, all the wood and everything down with water. Uh, so hopefully that prevents a fire. And also a fire extinguisher staying by. Um, so I think we're good to go. Now you're gonna, it's gonna be kind of loud. I've already put my earplugs in. Uh, plasma cutters tend to be pretty loud, but my compressor is also about six feet behind me. Um, so you hear that the regulator likes to howl when the air is coming out of there, and it'll probably kick on depending on how much air I use. So it seems it's going to get loud. Let's, uh, let's get started. I just kind of wanted to show a little closer up. Uh, maybe you can see how bent this piece is, but it has a pretty good curve in it. Uh, and that's uh, that's what happened. I'm kind of eyeballing these these wells. These are the two that I believe broke the day this happened. Now, if you take a look at this one here, probably doesn't show up on camera very well in this light, but there's a lot of dirt and grease. Um, along that weld and where the crack was. So I believe this has probably been cracked for for some time and uh, finally caused um, these other welds to let go, which then of course ruined the whole piece. So just wanted to show you that. So we're back. It's actually uh, probably almost two weeks later. Um, I had some stuff come up, wasn't able to get back in the shop. I did have a chance to stop by the steel store, picked up the new piece of steel that we're going to use for this bracket here. I've been sitting here uh, measuring it, um, trying to sketch it out, as well as I like to take a lot of pictures uh, with my phone or with the camera, just so I can remember what things look like before I took them apart. Um, see it that well on camera but you can kind of see the bends and everything um, the other thing I noticed I don't know if it'll show up on camera but these two brackets and it's the same way on the other side the one that's still on the back hoe, um, this is about two and a half inches here and about two and three quarter inches here uh, and it's the same on the other one so this is where the cylinder sits and then it the swing cylinder for the back hoe, and it swings in and out of this spot so 
I figured they probably just kept this end a little tight um, as far as the width of the cylinder that goes in here and then left this a little open um, just to make sure you know that if there was any flex or something on the hose the cylinder wouldn't be hitting, hitting these brackets. So I'm going to duplicate that when I put it back together. The other thing I noticed is you know, originally I thought these were kind of weld through bushings where they'd made a bushing on a lathe or something and you know bore a hole and welded it through, but they're not. They're just surface welded. And the hole is also not centered. Um, I don't really know why they they built it that way. Maybe this is inch and a half, so maybe they just had a lot of inch and a half stock available on hand. Um, <clears throat> so I kind of debated going, obviously this hasn't worn very much, neither one of them. Um, so it really doesn't need to be that thick. <coughs> so I kind of, excuse me, <coughs> kind of debated going with a smaller piece. Uh, however, the other bracket, um, you know, has larger, has these larger, this size piece, inch and a half as well. So I think I'm just going to stick with the same size and probably use the same technique, which is, I think they just cut a blank of this, welded it on here, and then came in, you know, from the backside probably and welded through the angle iron and through the through the, uh, the round stock there to get the whole position. So I've got all these measured out. Uh, I've got everything set to go. Um, so the next steps are to go ahead and finish cutting these brackets off um, and then making these bushings and getting set up to get them welded on there. And then also my new piece, this is two by three here. It's three inches this way, two inches back underneath here. So the place I buy my steel didn't have that. Um, so I bought a piece of three by three, same thickness, quarter inch. And then just to keep it looking the same, I think I'm going to go ahead and probably with the plasma cutter, just take an inch off of one side of this and then come in here and cut the corners and everything so it looks identical to this piece. Um, so I'm going to get set up probably with the plasma cutter to cut these loose and then cut this. It's kind of a cold, rainy day outside, so I don't know if I'll take the camera outside. Um, I may just do that off camera real quick. I have a small uh, table outside where I like to, that's where I prefer to do my plasma cutting and my grinding when I can, is do it all outside so it's not making a mess of my shop. Um, so I'll uh, get set up and then I'll come back when I have that done. Thanks. Okay, so I had a little uh, break in the rain, so I decided to uh, go ahead and cut these pieces apart. Um, so you can see I got them, I cut them out pretty ugly since this piece is now sacrificial anyway. I cut them out pretty ugly and uh, just get them out of there. And then I have to spend a little time just kind of washing away a lot of the old weld um, and stuff with the plasma. It saves you a lot of time with the grinder. Um, I do have a big 7 inch grinder which goes through steel pretty quick. But it you know, just takes a few, uh, takes a minute or two while you're there anyway with the plasma to go ahead and and clean those up. And then I also went ahead and uh, cut this piece down to the 2x3 size that we need. And you can see it got a pretty good cut uh, there. So I was going to take a minute to just kind of talk about the, the tips on the plasma cutter. And what I ended up doing there was I used this piece of angle, which is 1 inch, as a guide. And then when the tips mounted on the, uh, this drag on tip that I'll talk about here in a second is mounted on the torch I get about a half inch of offset so you know with what you have here plus the angle plus the offset from the torch it came right out to one inch that I need to trim off of this edge so let me get set up to zoom in here and I'll talk a little bit about the different uh, tips that I used for this work okay and I'm back so normally this is kind of what I run in my in my torch which is you have this piece with this, what they call like a saddle nozzle. Um, that all goes in here and sits, you know, screws onto the torch. So you get this kind of long end uh, poking out of the end of the torch, which makes it real easy to see when you're cutting. You can also get this this tip that you can use in that mode, uh, which this one's been. I only have one of these because I really don't care for it. It was originally on there, it was a little used and abused. But I found with this sort of squared off end, you can't see very well when you're trying to cut. And this tapered tip is much better um, for when you're trying to freehand and cut. Now, what I used um, for this 
to cut the uh, piece of the angle here was actually use this setup, which is a what they call a drag on tip. Uh, in this scenario, the tip is electrically hot, so if you touch it to the material, um, that's not good. So with the drag on tip, these two components actually go in the back. And when this screws on, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but down inside of here, that small little cap does not make contact with this outside cap. So this outside cap is electrically uh, neutral. So this goes right on your material and you just drag it. So when you use something like this for a guide, and I had this out there on the table and then clamp down, you can actually put the, the body of the torch right up against this piece and drag it along and it makes a very nice, very smooth cut as you can see with the results here. And I'll probably touch this up. I'll take a flap disc and like a four and a half inch grinder. Um, I like the 120 get grit flap discs. Uh, they don't take off too much material, so it's really easy to come in here and just kind of round the corners and polish this up a little bit. They're not that easy to find. I can find them at Lowe's usually, uh, but Home Depot doesn't carry them and some other places, tool places I've been, uh, doesn't carry them. But so that's where we're at right now. I've got that piece trimmed down. Uh, the next thing I'll do is work on uh, angling the corners as well as locating the holes and making the punch marks um, for where we're going to um, one, weld on the bushings and then two, drill through them uh, for the pins that go for the cylinder and the stabilizer leg. Okay, so we're over here at the bandsaw and we're getting ready to make the uh, corner cuts on our piece of angle iron for our bracket. Um, one of the things this brings up is that I need to be able to cut 45s on my uh, horizontal bandsaw. This is a Kalamazoo 7AW that I picked up a few years ago off of uh, Craigslist for a hundred bucks. It's uh, lived a pretty uh, pretty long life. It does a pretty good job. Um, it cuts square, you know, the fence to the to the uh, to the blade is adjustable and you can make that square but it does cut sort of crooked when it comes down I can't remember if it toes in towards the saw or toes out but when you're cutting a taller piece it uh, it does not cut straight down which I've messed around a little bit with blade tension and stuff like that I'm not sure if it's that or if there's actually something tweaked in the saw itself like I said it hasn't exactly lived the easiest life but uh, a lot better than cutting stuff uh, with a sawzall or something like that or hacksaw by hand. So one of the things I got off of uh, a website was to make this quick little jig. Um, and I just made it out of wood so it's real quick. But this piece of metal here just fits snugly in the in the groove here where the uh, defenses run back and forth. So you snap that down in there like that. And then you can put your work up against here and it holds it solid when you clamp. I keep this one floating at all times. Uh, and then you can cut a 45 degree. So cutting this way is fairly simple. It's actually the cut on the other end that's going to be a bit more of a challenge. Now I've already made my marks here as to where I want the cuts to start. So let's bring the blade down. Kind of end up here. Probably about, about right in the money right there. I'm going to clamp it down. Fire it up and cut that.
that one cut off nicely. So now the problem comes when I need to cut this other corner. Um, my fence only really swings one way. It comes back maybe 15 degrees or something the other way. Um, so I'm stuck sort of having to cut the piece upside down. Now if, the, if this fence swung back the other way, I could make a mirror image of this guide here, um, which would hold my piece the other way for me and let me cut across there. But uh, it doesn't. So now I've recently come into the possession of a of a rotary table, so that may be a project someday to get in there and sort of mill this around and uh, and allow me to go 45 degrees uh, both ways for these 45 cuts. 45 cuts seem you know fairly common. So the problem you have when you put this in there is that as soon as you start to tighten it down, it wants to to lift and keep it. In. So, but the only way I've really found of controlling that is is try and put something that's the same height under here which I happen to have uh, this piece of uh, pipe which is what inch and yeah, inch and three quarter because we got two inches there minus about a quarter for the web so you can slide that in there but it still doesn't and that'll keep it flat or give you something to help keep it flat but it still doesn't stop it from wanting to kick up so the only other thing I've really found I don't have any clamps big enough or skinny enough to come inside the the um, blade on this side and I really don't have any that fit coming back in on the back side either that have enough of a throat to come out and really catch say in the middle if you clamp back here this end can still move around on you so the best thing I found is take something like this block use a piece of scrap and a clamp and just come in here and take that to the To the fence, kind of tap it all down, make sure that the angle's tight on the type of the, in this case, a piece of pipe I'm using for a spacer, keep the right height. And then go ahead and tighten up your fence. And let's adjust our depth here. Blocking you guys or not. Let's adjust our, exactly where we want to cut here. About right there. Now we can clamp everything solid. tight and clamp it down. Make sure we're still lined up about where we want to be. And we are. So cut it off. if you don't have this sort of stop block is this whole piece wants to rotate and if the blade catches it flips that up and then either mess up some of the teeth or breaking some of them off or just messing them up or it can actually it's actually broken the blade uh, before uh, back when I was in my learning phase so let's loosen everything up and 
And there we go, we've got our two uh, angle cuts. So we look just like the other piece. Now we need to lay out where the holes are, make our bushings, weld them on, drill the holes, and uh, we'll be ready to put it back on the backhoe.